Good morning, ladies, and welcome to Monday, Monday after Easter. I hope that everyone has an awesome Resurrection Day, Easter Day. I hope that you are entering into today feeling good and refreshed, maybe a little tired, especially if you served at church or were helping out um, or hosting Easter dinner or anything like that. Maybe you're a little tired, you are little tired. Um, um, we are going to talk a bit about Matthew 1344 again today. My computer and my internet is back to normal. It seems we had critters that were chewing our lungs. So hopefully that's over. You can hear me well and the connection is here. Um, as always, we want to start out praying. So spoken or unspoken. Um, as a side note, we record this podcast live each and every week in the Fit and Faith um, group in Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern on Monday mornings. Um, so feel free to join us there. We're happy to have you in the community of months that are just come together to support, uplift, and encourage each other through not only motherhood, but through trying to be here, trying to live Jesus in more than one way than just um, raising kids, but also through how we eat, how we move, and how we treat our bodies. So let us pray, Lord. We come together with you today. We just thank you so much for the day. We thank you for the ability um, to be on this side of the Bible uh, of thoughts. Yes, I just want to what was Mary thinking? What were the disciples thinking? You know, what was going through their minds? You were gone and to see, yes, indeed, you were risen and you have taken on our sin and you have taken on our name. And today, you remind us all of that, even after Easter, that you fill our hearts and our spirit with that knowledge so that we move forward with chains from our past, holding us down. Father, thank you for being the chain-breaking, earth-shattering, uh, amazing, healing doctor, God, that you are. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. And in your name, we pray. You are one here. The whole event for this, but I wasn't sure really what I was going to talk on and then realized last week our conversation was interrupted because of technology. So I wanted to dive deep back into that again today. So we're um, looking at Matthew 13, 44. And last week we looked at this with the parables um, that Jesus told the disciples, which is the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. And I want us to think about that today because so often I'm talking to women um, who want to get healthy, right? There is, there want to get healthy. And we about this last week too, the need and the want and how they sort of have to come together when our kids ask us for something so quick. As moms were like, do you need that or you want that? And they'll go, we want it. And we go, well, then we don't need it right now. It's not a necessity. So many of us need our health. In fact, I'd argue all of us need our health. Do we need or want it? Right? We need it. And we go, I don't know what I need to do to change though. And I really conform to how I'm acting right now and how I'm behaving right now. And I'm accustomed to these uh, lifestyles that I've made, these habits that I've made. I've talked to a lot of people saying, I'm just not good at keeping habits. And I argue you are absolutely good at keeping habits. You have habits right now. You're in habits right now, whether good or bad, you're in and living in habits right now. You get up every day and you do what? 
those are your, your habits, right? You get up every day and you do something, you make coffee, you get the kids ready for school, you do X, Y, or Z, you do the laundry, but whatever that is, you have habits. Sometimes we just release some of it to get some new ones. We have to release some things out of our life to be able to make room for changes. We want to have one of our, my clients, and um, I just love her, posted that a saying I say all the time, it's hard either way. It was hard for this man in this parable to see the treasure and bury it and run away and sell everything he had to buy this land. That's hard, right? That's a hard thing to, to do, sell everything. His house, not what he had, but sold everything so he could, hey, Jenny, buy this land. He not only wanted the land, he needed the treasure that is in there. I need you to know that you need to need and want physical changes in your body. It's not enough to just want, it. because if it was, everyone would do it, right? I want to get healthy. Great. Go I need to get healthy. Okay. But my want's not strong enough. We have to be pretty even keeled in this need and want. Because when we need something, this man needed this treasure. That meant he need to, needed to want to give up. Things that in his past, things maybe kept him safe, things that were maybe a comfort zone for him. He needed the treasure, wanted to give a part of himself in order to step in to this new thing, into this new thing. So just needing or wanting to get healthy, when you look at it as an either or, it's not enough. You need to have both. You need the need and you need the want. You have to be needing to get healthy. I need to get healthy. I don't want to be on medication when I'm older. I don't want to lead my daughters into viewing their bodies in warped ways. I want to break this, um, this, this sin that's on my body, these chains that are on my family of maybe it's obesity, maybe it's blood pressure, maybe it's high cholesterol, um, maybe it's emotional eating, right? That is going to be an issue. I need change, but I also need to want to shed what has been holding me in this place. If we don't have both, we're not going to move forward. We are going to be in this limbo of good, bad, and good and evil, and us and desire, and yeah, but do I really? Yes. In order for you to step in, to your health and wellness, you have to do what this and did and give up the things that have been holding you back to step into the treasure in a new land. It is going to be difficult either way. My client posted it. It is going to be difficult going to the doctor and being told that you need to be on medicine, that your Organs are failing, you have to treat them right, that uh, you've got issues, that you need to let go of some things. That's going to be hard to hear. It's going to be hard to say, I'm giving up everything, right? I'm giving up this. Phoenix says her emotional eating, a lot of times emotional eating is caused to us just wanting some sort of control when we feel out of control. And Phoenix, just like you said, now you're addicted to junk food. We have habits. Are we willing to say, I'm going to break those habits because I need and want to. I need these things to work together. I'm going to bury this and hide this treasure, what the man did, and sell everything to get here. That means I'm going to shop differently to get to where I need to go. I'm going to think differently when I start making foods 
when I start meal prepping, I'm going to think differently when it comes to how I move my body. Maybe you move your body as a form of punishment for what you ate. That is not exercise. That is punishment. And I always hate that. And young kids, you hear me talk this a lot in schools. Uh, when kids are punished by exercise, exercise is not a punishment for your body. Exercise is an ability to praise God. He gave us the ability to move. Your four hour workout or your 45 minute workout or whatever it is, does not outweigh what you eat. It will never make up for what you eat. In fact, I talked about this a phase ago. If you're just judging your athleticism by your workouts or your movement by just your workouts, you moving for an hour a day and sitting for the rest of the day isn't good either. Just like eating just one good meal, right? Doesn't transform the rest of your day. I had Jesus breakfast. But everything else went haywire and and I I didn't eat what God put here for me to eat. I didn't eat what God put here for fuel, for energy, for for whatever it is they're looking for with food, actual energy. When we start viewing our emotional comfort and putting weight on food whatever designed to be, that's when we get mixed up. The world mixes us up so much. Food isn't meant to be our comfort. God is. Food isn't meant to be the one that brings us peace. God is. Food isn't meant to be something that has control over us. We are to have control over it. It is a fruit of self-control. How does fruit grow? And I talk about, I talk about that a lot. Um, gardening and just watching they grow in a great time of year. Do what you can look around. We're, we're putting emphasis on things that wouldn't be there. So a cookie donut habit. We're putting emphasis on things that shouldn't be there. First off, <laughs> God never calls us by our juice, calls us a daughter of God. He calls us a child of God. The enemy will call by our dysfunction, right? You're, you're a sinner. Yeah, I know God called me that, but I'm also saved. That's who I am. I am not, a, I am not controlled. I, I am not those things. That's the enemy speaking lies into my brain. I am a daughter of the one true king. That's who I am. And when we start labeling ourselves by our dysfunction, we get stuck in this weird space where we are a child of God, but we're believing that we are a label. Just like the prostitute, right? Rahab, just like the woman at the well, Jesus didn't label her by women who didn't hold down a husband. He didn't call her broken. He didn't call her addicted to whatever. He called her child, daughter. Come, come to me. Food was never meant to rule over us the way we are allowing it to rule over us. God gave us and made Adam and Eve. You control this now. You Rule, rule over this and we allow it to go into this place that it shouldn't be right and jesus came and he threw everything upside down religiously i want to throw everything upside down you trinally you to stop giving it the power stop giving it the pharisee power that you think it needs it does not have control over you and takes mind knowing that that takes repetition going through that. That takes you needing and wanting change to have to say, I'm getting rid of this day after day after day. It's hard either way, either way, hard from the guilt from eating that way. And it's hard battling your mind not to eat that way. We have to choose our heart. It's hard for the 
man to see treasure and go, what do I do? What do I do now? I'm going to sell everything I've got and go change and go change. And I'm going to walk into something that I don't know. There is nothing in this parable, which is why I love Jesus' parable so much. Nothing in this parable that said the man had any farming knowledge, that he was a, a carpenter, that had people you know, that could build houses and, and plant seeds. He just bought a, a plot of land, sold everything that he knew, moved into it. You have to move into a place with health, right? You have to move into that place with your wellness. You have to move into that place with your meaning and wanting to treat your body with the respect it deserves because it is a temple living with the spirit inside of it and say, what I've been doing isn't working. That land isn't providing any fruit. This land that I'm living in isn't helping me grow closer to God. It isn't helping me grow closer to my health goals. It's not helping me be able to say yes to what God wants me to do. In fact, it's allowing the enemy to work way easier. I want the enemy to work on me. Like, you want to come for me, you have to come through some barriers right? You're going to have to, to bring your best enemy, not play to sweet. Those she can't say no to that. So I don't really have to move much harder because she's going to be able to move when God calls her. That's a harsh thing that I went through when I was going through my health too, right? If, am I physically able to say yes, God calls me to move, move. Or am I in this position right now that I can't physically move? Even everything in me needed and wanted to move towards God calling me to do right now. Could I? Or am I not? Because I'm not treating this land with any respect. I'm treating this land with any love. I just talk self-hate to it all day. I put it down. I myself, I'm not capable of doing things. I don't eat right. I don't exercise, and then I allow it to degrade and just wear down. And then I get myself again, and then I talk about it again. And the cycle just continues. So we talked about the fruit of self control a little bit, and then I digressed. This is a great season to see. I tree that's out back. It's a crepe myrtle. We got it probably five years ago, and had to transplant into my backyard. So it is back there. It was supposed to like suck all the water because we're on sort of like a floodplain in my backyard. So it was supposed to suck up water, help with some of that. And then it was supposed to bloom in this beautiful pink that apparently it did before. It got moved. It has been five now. This is the first year it bloomed, that it has grown. It has taken me not giving up on that tree, not saying it was broken, not saying it was damaged, not being all these excuses to it that it's not good enough. And I wasn't down talking it, right? You're spot on water. There's a water here. You're in full sunshine. This is supposed to be your ideal situation. I wasn't yelling at it. I knew it was coming to a new this new round that it was been to. It's not used to it. It had to get new roots. It had to get a new foundation. It had to get settled where it was. It had to bloom way back. When it came in, it had beautiful blooms. Um, that next season, my landscaper was like, you're going to have to cut all those back um, for to know it needs to go healthier less, or else it's going to continue trying to grow out of what was working it for a lot of not going to have the tree to do the root aren't solidified yet. So you're going to have to cut it back. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it's so pretty. And I cut it back and nothing grew. The actual was a time last year that I came in and said to my husband, like, we might have to take that out. You know, it's really not doing anything. But I would go out and water it, give it its food, make sure that it had the right soil, all of this. When you are moving 
one sees the next from, from this man in the parable, from selling all of his stuff to going into this land that he doesn't know, he doesn't have roots. He doesn't have a house there possibly yet. He's just got this treasure. My backyard was a treasure for this plant, for this tree. It didn't have its, its roots up yet. That man had to prune all of the good things of this earth that people would look at him and probably call him crazy, right? That's crazy. And my neighbors probably saw me pruning my tree and they go, that's crazy. It's so pretty. Why would you do that? But five years later, I wouldn't have the amazing tree that I have today where it knew it didn't have right nutrients. It didn't have what needed to thrive right then, but it took years and years and years. Your health is not just this six week patent project it's going to be done. And then you never think about it again. It's going to take years. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a trainer for 22 years. I've been in this industry a long time. I have certifications up and down my wall. I still work with a trainer. I've been with a trainer now for three months. I have them for a year. Prior to my injury, I had a trainer for five years. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not something that changes. The need and the want have to be there. You need to say, I need to eat healthier. Also, I don't want to eat that because it doesn't line up with where I'm trying to go. I need to know that my roots are going to take time to solidify. And down to myself, always, I'm seeing all the sad faces. I'm an emotional eater, sad face. I'm addicted to this. Oh my gosh, I eat whatever's out face. Stop talking yourself. Stop labeling yourself as that and start calling yourself something higher, something bigger, something more. Because the fruit of self-control, just like that tree, doesn't just develop fruit because you say, I'm going to get healthy. Imagine if I yelled at that tree every day, just put my flowers, just put good fruit. This is what you were called to do. This is what you were meant to do. You're lazy. You're capable. You're not able to do what you're supposed to imagine. First off, my neighbors would think I'm nuts yelling at a tree. It's what we told them every day. You're not capable. You're just this. You're a label. You're throw whatever this in there. And then you go, hey, I don't, I am not changing. Have you spoken life into yourself lately? Sometimes we become so reliant on others to motivate us to change, to guide us to change. And yes, that's necessary. I have them in my life, but they don't live here with me making my food choices every day. They don't live here with me saying, I know you doubt today, but do you move at all functionally the rest of the day? Or did you just become so obsessed with your work? You just ah, worked all day. So don't yell at yourself like that. Stop talking to yourself in this mat. You're not what you're saying you are. Imagine though, if that tree had emotions and feelings and they say singing to plants, it helps them. I've never tried the three, but people swear by it. Green thumbed people swear by it. I've tried just talking nice to yourself today. I'm a child of God. I have a treasure lives in me. I don't need this worldly man-made stuff in my um, 28 day challenge. I talked about this today. We're so versed on a call out false right? False teacher, false teacher, false teacher. The world is doing that with your food too. The world is doing that with body. The world is doing that with your mindset too. Why don't we become more in tune to those things that we're putting into our body? The world's warped carbs and fat and proteins. The world has warped grains from what they should have been to what they are now. The world has warped all of your food in this pre- packaged, processed crap that just gives you things that you're going to be addicted to. So you go back and buy more. 
outfit so they can run rich and you dependent. That's not how it's supposed to be. Let's flip this script upside down. So the next time you go, Oreos are here. I just feel like eating Oreos. You go, Oreos don't own me. I can try that. what the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of all the fruits of the spirit, but self-control in particular takes years of control. That truth took years of me pruning things back slowly. I didn't prune it all once, right? You need to kick all your habit at once, pick one. Be like, Boop. I'm going to prune that. And I'm going to work on that this month, this year, whatever it is. I'm going to work on that one thing for this extended amount of time and stop expecting 15 years of hammering on your body and not treating it rightly or correctly to be corrected in 12 weeks. Stop, stop. stop expecting to go on a, a colon cleanse and I only drink liquids. And now all of a sudden you're even real is amplified and you figure that out it's because we're meant to chew. Our, our bodies have an actual digestion system. Start with June. When you just put lids and you're like, I'm cleansing and I lost eight pounds this weekend, you will gain it back instantly when you start chewing it. You'll stop doing those crazy things. Your body is a great colon cleanse all on its own when you eat the right things. Your body is a great cleanser of things that doesn't need on its own when you're hydrated, when you're eating the right things, when you're sleeping enough. It's all about. It does love that. So today, I want you to be like this man in this parable, Matthew 3, 44, found treasure. It's me. I'm the treasure. God chose you to be here. You to be your kid's mom. You to be your husband's spouse. You to speak to the community. He chose you as you are treasure. Stop speaking to yourself like you are trash. Stop. The enemy doesn't have to work at all when you destroy yourself. He's like, oh, Heather <laughs> hates herself. So I don't have to do anything. Um, she'll destroy herself. She's not going to do the full work of God because she doesn't believe she can, um, doesn't believe she's worthy, believe enough to do any work. She's fine. I want the enemy working on you. And so often we're like, no, it's hard. What's hard? Us destroying ourselves. Guess what's harder? Us going in and needing medicine and then still not change. So many times, and this is in my family, in some of my best friends' family, they go, what you need to do to survive and kill us is it healthy and exercise? And we're like, no. And I've seen people pass away because they're like, no, I want to do Your want and your need have to be the same. You have to want to shed off the things of this world. Food, how you do it, exercise, how you view it, mindset, how you talk to yourselves and step into the treasure that you call to be. Get rid of these things that are holding you down. Stop talking to bad to yourself. Imagine what, what happens to pants. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. We'll see what happens. When we talk love to plants, what happens to you? When you start speaking love to yourself and not degrading, not speaking down, not doing the enemy's work for him, Come to me, enemy. Bring it to me. I've got my armor of God on. I know who protects me. I know who me. I what I'm called. Bring it to me. But guess what? That's fruit of self-control comes after you prune, after you grow, after you till the land, after you wait, after you try, 
after you wait, wait, wait. It's going to take years. It took years I tried to produce fruit. Didn't give up on it. Don't be giving up on yourself that easily. You're doing the enemy work for him. And um, they always like, don't do the pitchers work for him. Don't swing it at bad pitches. Don't work for him, right? Don't make it easier on him. Don't make it easy on the enemy because you're degrading yourself. <laughs> Lift yourself. Oh, there's treasure, not that land in here. And I need it because it's the spirit. I cannot function without it. I need it. It is Jesus. It's my lifeline to bigger things. But I also want this badge to be falling off with it. I need and my want have to be the same. I'm going to sell what I was holding on to. I'm going to stop thinking what I was thinking. I'm going to give what I've been trying to do because clearly it's not working. I'm going to stop trying to have complete self-control instantly. When it's not all it works, we have to prune one thing at a time. We have to still love and care for it in, in his time. In his time, it will produce fruit. And it will produce beautiful. And you will be able to say yes. God says to move because not only in your health and wellness journey, are you getting closer to your goals? You're closer to him. We're getting closer to hearing his voice. I spoke to a bunch of clients and women this week going, how do I hear his voice? How often do you sing? I tell you what God is going to sound like to you or what that's going to feel like to you. You experience that yourself. And the only way to hear his voice and feel that is to be spending time with him. He's with you right now. Walk him out with to-do lists, with Facebook feeds, with Instagram, with reels, with work, kids, games. We're tuning out. He's not tuning us out. We've lost sight of our compass and that's okay. You start with five minutes a day, go on you the moment. And I'm writing down, I write down my scripture of the day and a little note from Mila on there and I post it right there. And feel for what I look up. I focus my eyes on his word and I go, all right, it's gonna be okay. He's here in place. He's moving right now. I liken hearing God's word to our kids. When we first born all baby cries, the same, right? Especially for a first time mom, like when we had our first kids. We're like, oh my gosh, we hear the nursery. And then we're all crying, kids, we're like, is that mine? Is that mine? What, you know, what's happening? And now six years in and 12 years in, no packs his voice over anyone else. And hear Mila if she cries in an auditorium, right? We had a huge Easter egg. Uh, yeah, I saw, uh, gosh, 200, 300 kids. I hear my kids over all that noise, but it's because I've been with them constantly growing, learning, always with them. We got to be walking always with God to hear that voice too, because we're not, because, right? It's just this chaos of kids. It's this chaos of obligations. It's this chaos of priorities. It's this chaos of time. So I'm giving you my best. I told my clients, I want her to tithe her time, tithe your time, Six minutes we give on this planet that is a blessing, that is a privilege, that's not a guaranteed. I'm going to give him six minutes back. I'm just going to sit in his peace and his goodness. None of us have enough time when we're working by the world's clock. But I do have enough time. I'm working by his. Because this 36 minutes that I've been on here is a blessing. It's a privilege that he gave me. Out of my breath, the spirit to me talk. Needs and wants. Yes, stuff needs to get done for the business. Yes, things need to get done for your house. But you need to want to change too for yourself. 
all those things will get done. It always does. It always does. One of our coaches commented on here, just like an angel with breaking this down. Cause I get caught up in all the, I don't know, the priorities aren't priorities. And she brings me back sometimes like, Hey, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. You think of the treasure that lies within you. And I want you to start selling things off in your mind, in your spirit that are not helping you grow that treasure and protect it. Negative self-talk, label yourself, your dysfunction, calling yourself these things that are not true. I want you to sing his praises in your life. Put on some war music, sing, do something else. I want you to put on some worship music and prep some food. I want you to go to the tree, put some heads in, get some worship music on and pick out some fresh fruits and veggies because those are the things that God put here. Shed the things of the world, the process, the problems, the pushing, the perfection. Shed those things and move into treasure he has given you here. You have to need it. You have to want it. And you, that desire needs to work together to go, I'm changing because I'm more than this. I'm more than this. So if you are motivated, I'd love to know what one thing you're going to sell off, right? Negative self-talk. What is? What are you going to sell this week, this year to grow closer, to produce fruit of self-control and fruit of the spirit to grow in your life, to grow closer, not to your health and wellness goals, but to God and to hearing his voice. What are you going to sell off this week? And if your needs are right, you're just like, I just need a guy to help me out because I need this. I want this. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to surround myself with support love and women who are going to this church with me, then you can comment methodized below. And we will talk about what my methodized mom program looks like. Also starting next, we got a fun new announcement for mother's day. Um, and I will not tell you about that now, even though I want to, <laughs> um, we're going to break down some ways that you can gift this to others as well. So let me know what you are going to sell off so that we can move into this promised land that was here. So you cannot be what you've been, but you can move into who you want to become. And if you want more guidance and support and love and, and support on moving forward in those goals, you need a little bit more. You want to see this action, how to take these things that you know you need to do and put them into application. You can comment methodized below and we can talk about if a good fit for a program. And if not, we can talk about other resources I've got that you can hop into. So thank you, ladies. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Happy, happy Monday. And I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.